Hello everyone, and welcome back to the series where I talk about some trivia on the Japanese culture or language and some nuances that were lost in the translation from the Japanese audio to the English subtitles of an anime. In this case, for the fourth episode of Onimai. This episode, we got a new character, Momiji, the little sister of Kaede. Momiji in Japanese can represent the autumn colors the phenomenon of the leaves changing color, or directly the word for a maple tree. In the scene where Mihali tells Mahiro that she must take her leave for the night, she used Oitoma, something really formal and polite to say that you are leaving. It can also be used in the context of quitting your job. The term that Mihali used in the reason that she gave for the needing to leave because of a major turning point, was Yamaba, which comes in a literal sense from mountain and location. It gives the image of a peak that raises above the regular ground level, like in a graph, or representing the climax or critical point of something. When Mahiro talks to Miyadi about his encounter with Momiji at the supermarket and how it made him question himself, the original line was using Michio Fumi Hazusu, an expression of stepping outside the path, probably referring to the stray path. In Japanese culture, and probably all over East Asia, there's a lot of expression that turns around the concept of a path, or sometimes translated to the way, in a more philosophical context. And since something central to Buddhism, Taoism, and the teachings of Confucius, which obviously all had big impacts on the history and culture of East Asia. The Sunday morning lineup that Milo talks about in the beginning of the episode with the Magical Girl Show refers to three time slot every Sunday morning on ANN from 8.30 to 10 a.m. broadcasting shows for kids. That period of time is often described as Nichiasa, like by Mahiro in this episode. It comes from the abbreviation of Nichiasa Kids Time, Sunday Morning Kids Time. A pretty popular anime that comes from that time slot is all the Predicure animes. A way that Japanese people can call themselves in a similar way as Men of Culture in English is with Shinshi, which is a Japanese word for gentleman. For those that watch Stains Gate, Daru called himself that a couple of times in the series. When Mahilo exits the supermarket and says that his body had a mind of its own, referring to his reaction after realizing that him and Momiji could be seen as a couple, the original line was using Koyaku, which originally can be interpreted in a strategical way as capturing a territory or defeating an opponent. In a gaming context, this term is also used to talk about a strategy guide, or more commonly known as a walkthrough. In this instance, I think it's making a reference to an eroge, when you try to access the root of a certain character, and Mahiro saying that Momiji almost unlocked his character root with the event that just happened. When talking about Momiji and Mahiro's apparent age, they refer to it by saying that they look like JC. This is an abbreviation from Joshi Chugakse, female middle school student. The term used by Mahiro that was translated into lesbian was Yuri, and is a bit more of a slang term for talking about a genre of stories about romance between girls. It's a bit similar as BL, boys love, or stories on romance between boys. The word yuri is normally just the word for a lily flower. The use of that specific flower name seems to have come from a magazine targeted to gay men, Balazoku, that first started in 1971. In that magazine, romance between guys was thought to have the image of a rose flower, Bala. And they later added a corner for girls' romance that they said gave instead the image of a lily flower. Lilies are known for their pure and clean white color, but having a strong scent when getting closer. It's supposed to reflect the pure and clean looking relation between girls, that has in the inside a strong relationship filled with rich emotions 
hidden from sight. Not sure how many people could be interested by that, but the voice actress of the magical girl in the opening scene of this episode was a professional Japanese cosplayer that seems to be really popular, Inako. She has 2.2 million Instagram followers, 1.9 million Twitter followers, and even a YouTube channel of 485,000 subscribers. She is also singing the opening song alongside Kimaru Sama, a pretty big YouTuber with over 2.6 million subscribers. One of the things that is pretty much always gonna be lost in a translation from Japanese to English is the different first person pronouns that people use to talk. In English, whatever your age or gender, everyone uses I, but in Japanese, there's a lot of different pronouns that you can use depending on the way you talk and portray yourself. There's no real correct pronoun to use in a casual setting, but it can usually give a certain image of the person talking and show a little glimpse of what kind of person you are. In this episode, when Mahilo talks about him being a pro-home security officer, in that line he uses the pronoun Kochitola. This is a pronoun that was mostly used back in the Edo period, mainly by men when picking a fight with someone or to sound really rough. With time, it became kind of a symbol of a hard-working real man from the good old times, often associated with the term of being a true Tokyoit, Edoko, which is literally Edo's child, with Edo being the previous name of Tokyo. Another instance of different pronoun is in the scene when exiting the supermarket. Mahilo was about to use Ole, which is the one that he normally uses. But this is something that is vastly used by men and sounds a bit rough and arrogant. He then switched to Watashi, a pronoun that is way more neutral in terms of politeness and a bit more feminine. A couple of smaller nuances for those interested. Just a formality was Kotoba no Aya, a figure of speech. Be a capable big brother was Aninoi Genga Kaifuku regain my big brother's dignity. You are so knowledgeable was Tanomoshi, being reliable or trustworthy. I didn't recognize you was Funiki Chikao, having a different aura or presence. And she seems cool was Omoshiroiko, an interesting person or child. That's all I had for this episode. And you know what to do if you want me to continue the series. And if you like that type of videos, you could go check out one of the other anime that I covered. Otherwise, I'll see you next week.